Most people chart Harvey Keitel's career from the release of Mean Streets in October 1973. In fact, by the time it was released, he'd been acting for more than a decade. He was 34 years old. As Charlie Kappa, a would-be wise guy, he was playing someone years younger than he was. A young man about to begin in life, torn between conflicting demands for loyalty, torn by feelings of religion-driven guilt on all fronts. Keitel looked the part of the feral young climber trying to advance within the crime family, even as he tortured himself with guilt about the morality of what he was doing. The interior life, however, came from the additional years of experience Keitel brought to the role. He understood Charlie so well because he had already lived the life Charlie was struggling with. Trying to balance the pull of family expectations with dreams of his own liberation, clambering to gain a foothold in a profession that offered the cold face of rejection significantly more often than one of warm acceptance. Perhaps I got the part of Charlie because Marty sensed that I came from a similar background, Keitel ventured. Consider Charlie Cap a young Italian-American in Little Italy. Sharp dresser and aspiring operator. Still a deep believer in the powers of God and the devil, as set out by the Catholic Church. Unable to reconcile that with the criminal life he is positioning himself for, running a restaurant for his uncle, a mob capo. Troubled by his uncle's demand that he stop spending time with his crazy friend Johnny Boy, equally troubled by Johnny Boy's penchant for wild behavior that invariably gets him into trouble. To get his film made, Scorsese was willing to swallow hard and cast him. Scorsese was in New York to take advantage of the scant two or three days of location shooting in Little Italy that was budgeted for the production. He thought of Keitel and decided that, as he had done in Who's That Knocking At My Door, Keitel would serve as his alter ego in Mean Streets. He called Keitel and filmed him walking through the conveniently timed San Gennaro Festival in Little Italy, footage that went into the film. Even as Scorsese began rehearsing Keitel with De Niro, the casting question remained somewhat up in the air, because De Niro wasn't sure he wanted to play Johnny Boy. De Niro had appeared in more than a half dozen films at that point, and now he wasn't sure he should be playing a supporting role again. I ran into Harvey on the street and he was going to play Charlie, he remembered. I told him I thought maybe at this stage of my career, I should hold out for something else. I felt the logical part for me was Harvey's part, but he already had it. In De Niro, Keitel saw a compatriot, a fellow actor who relished the process of discovering the characters in the same way. Finally Keitel hit on a solution he would switch roles with De Niro. De Niro could have the lead, the central role of Charlie Kappa. Keitel would play the supporting part of the volatile Johnny Boy. But Scorsese put his foot down the casting would stand as it was. The role of Charlie was the film's anchor. The entire movie is his story his wrestling with the disparate forces trying to dominate his life. He is the film's eyes, its heart, its conscience. Scorsese was being autobiographical in examining the questions that dominated in his life and Keitel was the actor who understood exactly what Scorsese was talking about. The two of them shared an interest in the big questions God, faith, redemption, what makes a man good in relation to other people and to God. They would hash it over and over how should you act in a certain situation? Was there such a thing as situational ethics? We are both very religious people and we have experienced the same conflicts with religion, Keitel observed. He's Catholic, I'm Jewish but we both belong to the church of struggling to do what's right. It's a personal moral code rather than a formal religion. As Scorsese and Keitel saw it, Charlie was a modern urban saint, struggling to keep possession of his own soul, torn between decisions that will affect the rest of his life. In their discussions, Scorsese told Keitel a story about religious retreats he went on as a kid. The priests would discuss the idea of purification through pain, demonstrating this by holding their hands over kindles. It was a gesture Keitel adopted as Charlie, constantly testing his resolve with candles and matches. Marty and I always discussed a theme and, usually, he trusted me to do what I had in my mind to do, Keitel recalled. Mine was a gut, root, raw experience of trying to express myself and express the character of Charlie, and trying to discover what it meant to express yourself in a character. Now, working with De Niro, 
Another actor's studio member, the three of them found a groove that couldn't be shaken by the brevity of the shooting schedule or the smallness of the budget. Mean Streets offered opportunities for the actors to develop scenes for themselves. According to Scorsese, much of the improvisation in the film was taped at rehearsal and then scripted from those tapes. A few scenes, like the one in which De Niro and Keitel fight each other with garbage pails, were improvised during shooting. In the scenes in the back room between De Niro and Keitel after they meet in the bar, I thought it would be fun to improvise and show more of the characters. We realized that we liked Abbott and Costello a great deal, their language routines with inverted word meanings done with wonderful timing. David Pruvel, playing Tony, who owned the bar where Charlie and Johnny Boy hung out, was making his film debut. For me, it was a real experience to watch Marty and Bobby and Harvey just jamming, he recalled. They were like jazz musicians up there. The sparks that Keitel and De Niro were giving off on the set led Romanus and Pruvel to rethink their approach to their characters, in dealing with the hyperactive Johnny Boy and the fast-talking Charlie. Romanus remembered, I chose to be laid back with my character because Bobby and Harvey had a bristling energy I hadn't seen before. David Pruvel and I decided that since Harvey and Bobby had such energy, we should take the low energy road so that we could be a contrast to them. Harvey is totally organic, fast on his feet. He's not the kind of guy you can sit down and discuss the part with. But between action and cut, he's like a broken field runner. He's fast, he's very instinctive and very solid boy, you couldn't trip him up if you wanted to. Pruvel found Keitel intense and demanding. It's few and far between, the actors with that level of commitment. The commitment had to do with the quality of the work as a whole, and not just his own performance. While filming Pruvel's biggest scene, in which Tony explains to Charlie why believing in the Catholic Church is a sucker bet, Pruvel was nervous and unsure. As they played the scene after a preliminary rehearsal, Keitel's attitude shifted he began to shut Pruvel out, purposely turning away from him, instead of listening to what he had to say. Pruvel pushed a little harder at Keitel, giving the scene an added free song of friction and life. Mean Streets had its debut at the prestigious New York Film Festival in September 1973 before its opening in October. The film drew reviews that hailed Scorsese's emergence as a welcome and distinctive new voice, dealing with issues of morality and human frailty while reimagining the gangster film. Keitel, in his major studio debut, received the kind of reviews most actors would kill for. With, perhaps, the exception of De Niro who parlayed the flashier Johnny Boy role into a New York Film Critics Circle Award as the Best Supporting Actor of 1973. Newsweek's Paul D. Zimmerman called De Niro's Johnny Boy beautifully realized in all his self-destructive flamboyance. Still, Pauline Kael observed in The New Yorker, Keitel makes De Niro's triumph possible. Johnny Boy can bounce off Charlie's anxious, furious admiration. Keitel, cramped in his stiff clothes, looks like a more compact Richard Connie or Dean Clark, and speaks in the rhythms of a lighter-voiced John Garfield, Charlie's idol. Roger Ebert would later write, Keitel was an actor unlike other leading men. He seemed vulnerable, needy and driven but in a fundamental way, not in a mannered way, like James Dean. His character introduced the theme that would be central to Scorsese's work and to Keitel's guilt and its redemption. Keitel was gracious about De Niro's burgeoning movie career, even as he himself had to hustle to land TV roles. As Keitel says when you really love someone, and they have success, that love only allows you to be happy for that person. Nothing else is permitted if the love is true. Would I have liked to have had other roles? Yes. Because I didn't work for a long time after Mean Streets. I don't know if it's cloudy or bright.